Portugal.com, the new computer, everything seems to be going well so far. Oh, um... Only kidding, everybody. Good morning to you. I, I'm tempting fate. I've got a new PC for the office, I think, and, and a new camera combo. Uh, looking looking higher definition, I think, this morning. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Sorry if that is scaring anybody. Lots of people queuing up to say hello and good morning this morning. And especially live from Lisbon this morning, Gilles de Pereira, good friend. Hello. Good morning, How everyone. How are you this morning? I'm fine. I'm fine. As you know, I just came back from holidays, so I'm feeling very fresh and relaxed and so to start a new week of I'm work. So pleased. I'm so pleased for you. Well, look, it's lovely to have you back. As you know, so many people are, are delighted that you're back in the office. <laughs> Having had a <laughs> <laughs> having had a beautiful break in the Algarve, this your most recent picture. Is that a crescent moon over the Algarve there? Yes, it is. It is. Oh, it's beautiful. And, so, and if, you, if you zoom it, you can see the North Star also. Oh, really? How amazing. Yeah. yeah. I'm afraid the technology, the new computer doesn't allow me to do that yet. But uh, the North Star, the crescent moon, the evening in uh, the Algarve. Where were you exactly there? Uh, I was in Burgau. Uh, it's near Lagos. Yep, superb. And have you had a lovely time? I did, I did. And you know what happened? Uh, I'm going to tell you a, a short, a, a short story. Uh, I had a very, a very tough year, almost as everyone. But in business, this was very tough for us because consulates were closing, airports were closing, SEF was on strike, and then SEF was not SEF anymore. And now they are on strike because they want to be SEF again. So uh, it was a very difficult year uh, for us, um, for everyone that works with migration. So I didn't have time to, to spend with my friends or family. Uh -huh. So I went, I went to the Algarve with, uh, with my, my family, my husband, my kids. Uh, and then um, I went also with my, my brother-in-law and his family. Uh, and my mother-in-law. So there were nine of us in, in a big house. Uh, and then what happened was that when my friends found out I was going to be there, everyone started to show up. Uh, and it was amazing. And um, in, in total, uh, 28 people just came uh, to, visit, to visit me there. Um, even my brother that uh, lives in Angola, uh, he arrived to Lisbon and he went, to, he went there uh, to spend some days with me and it was amazing because there was almost two years since I didn't uh, see my brother so I had an amazing time uh, with my friends and I, I realized that uh, I really have friends that care about me because w when they found out that I was on vacation over there and that I had time they they also found some time to pass by oh, so awesome. yeah it was incredible yeah, amazing. So, and I imagine, um, uh, well, if, if from a Portuguese point of view, it's the it's the great time for everybody to be on holiday. In fact, uh, Elder jokingly is saying to you, "It's not September yet. Go back to the beach." Um, but no, <laughs> you, you, you've got to get back to the office uh, and deal with this. I mean, yeah, you're absolutely right when you put it like that, Gilda. It has been the most extraordinary year for you um, because your business is based on people coming in and out of the country. And that, of course, has been very difficult. Um, I'm so glad to hear the family met up with you. I'm so glad to hear that you probably ate loads of lovely food and had lots of lovely Portuguese drink as well. Is that right? I did, I did, uh, you know, uh, because uh, then so many people stopped by and uh, some people managed to find a place in the, because the house where I, we were staying, we, there was a little hotel just in front. 
So people stopped there and they came to eat uh, in the house where we were staying. Uh, and it was amazing. And uh, what we did was uh, every day a uh, different uh, person was doing the cooking. Oh, excellent idea. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and my, I did my special dish, or at least what people think it's my special dish, which is um, um, fresh uh, fish with, um, with a little pasta, you know, how you call masada de peixe. Oh, little yeah. fishy. Yes. I did that. Uh, and people told it was very good. I don't know. Oh, my mouth is watering. Or, but they were missing they were missing my 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 cooking too. Oh yeah, yeah amazing. That's such sounds like such a lovely picture you paint there of all the family coming together and old friends you haven't seen for ages. You thoroughly deserve that break. Back to business. We'll let you go in just a moment. But all those things you mentioned there, uh, I know some of the wonderful people that uh, we both work with um, coming into Portugal. I've had a little bit of a delay at the airport. How's that looking at the moment? Oh, it's it's going to remain like that uh, at least when until they keep the strike. Right. Okay. And that, the, the problem is that the SCF are on strike, processing people coming into the country, right? And they're on strike because they want to retain or return to how they used to be, their original structure. Yes. Yes. Okay. So sadly, folks, we, that's, that's what we have to report at the moment. This is ongoing. Um, factor it in. I guess that's all you can do is factor in a little bit of a wait possibly at the airport for getting processed into the country. Wait times, I think, of three or four hours possibly as well. So sorry to share that with yes. you. Yes. If you know, then you can at least make some sort of preparation for that. Anything to add? Yes, to that? some water, some water, some food. Um, it's it's very very sad what is happening. Yeah, and we can. And write, especially we can... because they don't, they could have done something at least to to spare um, uh, older people and people with children with that. They could make a queue for that. Uh, yes. You know, uh, you know that I've lived in Angola for for a long time. And they, they always did that, you know, no matter if they were on strike or if things uh, were going through a tough time, they always had a queue for older people and for people with babies. And I thought that was amazing. They should Absolutely. do the same here. I agree. I agree. So if, if we can get that message through, you know, we, I'm sure you've got a strong point to make and, and you feel like your only resort is to strike. But wouldn't that be a good look to, to prioritize pe really needy people like that who, who you could get to the front of the queue? And that would be some good PR. I think that would help make the point a whole lot better, as Gilda's just saying there. Anything else from the visa world, the migration world this morning, Gilda? Any any, any changes across? I mean, I, I guess there are loads and it's changing day by day. But anything in particular that comes to mind that you could share with us? Yeah, today? I'm very happy because while I was on holidays, uh, luckily many visas were coming out uh, and being approved. So so I, I was really happy with, with some news and some visas that, that got out. And yeah, some me. people from this group, they know uh, some visas were some some consulates are harder than others. Some visas are harder than others, and some difficult visas came out. Uh, and it because it was August, I was not expecting, um, but it means that uh, before they they went on strike because the strike is from SEF and it's not only on the airports. It's uh, everything on. In, in all CEFs, they are doing the, when they are attending people at the CEF, they are making a, what they call a partial strike also. And uh, on the approvals of the visas also, because the visas need to, to go through the first approval, VFS or consulate, and then they go to CEF for a final approval and then they go back to the consulate or VFS before they are actually issued. Oh dear. So, um, yeah. Some consulates are uh, the people that, this is very unbelievable, but uh, some consulates, I don't know if you know this, but the people that decide about the process uh, are on holidays, so they postpone the, the visas applications. Okay. And um, this was not such a good news. Uh, some people were supposed to go and deliver their process and they saw their date postponed until the end of August, beginning of September. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
So good news and bad news. The bad news there, as you can hear, some industrial action and some people going on holiday. Not a good look. Maybe something that we can be sorted out over time, uh, given the volume of people wanting to come to Portugal. It needs to change, doesn't it, so that people can have a decent experience of that. Um, but the good news is, every day I get a WhatsApp message or a messenger message or some some sort of communication saying, we're here, we're here. And it's so lovely. This is, this, this is something we weren't saying a year ago. And as our community's grown and as people have been working with you and coming to Portugal, Gilda, we get these lovely messages every day, which is fantastic. So if you are arriving, if you're newly arrived or about to, do keep us informed if you want to of your process and we all celebrate that with you. I'm thinking of some sort of touchdown award or something like that, a little award we can give to people from Expats Portugal to celebrate the fact that they've arrived. And of course, Jerry wants to be there with champagne as well at the airport. Uh, any excuse. Gilda, thank, <laughs> thank you so much yes. for, for sparing us a few minutes this morning, popping in. I'm glad you've had a great holiday. Back to the grindstone now. I'm back to the, um, uh, a lot of work. Back to the hard work, yeah. Oh, in, and I, I know you make light work of it and people love working with you. So you know where she is, EI or A Emigrante, Sasoria. Um, and you can find them on uh, expatsportugal.com in our business directory. Have a great day. Lots of love to all the team there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye bye. All right, yeah. Gilda. Bye for now. Bye for now. And let's have another quick look at her wonderful photograph of Burgal. I must go there one day. And I know some of you have been there and our, our wonderful uh, friend Tiago Zeferino. Um, the chef who Frank went and met and ate with. Paul Richards has met Tiago as well, um, uh, Senor Zeferino, uh, um, an amazing chef down there at, um, what's it called? Uh, the club, club. He, anyway, he cooks at a little club there um, and he'll do a little bit of a one-to-one -one experience with you. The food is exquisite, but I think the experience generally in Burgau is absolutely wonderful. And there it is, probably the last night that uh, Gilda was there uh, under the crescent moon and the North Star, as she mentioned. Good morning to you all. Sorry, I didn't mean to ignore you this morning, but we have to uh, have to process Gilda very quickly as though she were a visa paper herself. Um, but she's gone off to, to, to get all that work done with the team over there at EI. Let's see who's in this morning. Paul Richards, um, thank you for your comments about uh, my new venture with me and Mrs. M on a Tuesday night, the spiritual Portugal. Who knew? Who knew I had that closet New Age side to me? Some of you did, actually, I think. Um, but we're doing that on a Tuesday evening. And thank you for your feedback. And, and actually, the first two of you here who, who've made very favourable comments and have shown some interest, at least. Greetings from Harrogate. A somewhat cloudy, cold and windy morning. Let's hope Carl can cheer us up. That's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of pressure for me. What about this picture? And I'll explain more about it in a little while. The remarkable, the legend, Robin Williams. Uh, there you go on the right with our friend Jim McDonald. You know Jim McDonald who checks in from Wiesbaden uh, in Germany from time to time. There he is. He put a post up talking about uh, Robin Williams and when he met the guy. Um, and uh, we will come back to that but, and, and as tell you a little bit more about the conversation that was had uh, with that amazing legend. And of course, you know, good morning, Vietnam. Good morning, Portugal. Uh, I, I don't in any way. Um, compare myself to his comic genius, apart from sharing a similar title um, to the morning radio show. Uh, Victoria Benson, uh, bon dia todos. Good morning to you, Victoria. How are you? Thank you for your favourable comments. Bon dia todos. No mundo. Isn't that good? Thunder Duck. See you soon. Um, Jim White, bon dia a todos from Baltimore. Hey, Jim, how are you? Any other favourite uh, Robin Williams references? If you've met Robin Williams as well, anybody, let us know. Or what's your what's your favourite um Robin Williams' character or gag. Uh, Tom Selton's here. Good morning, everybody. How are you doing? Oh, yes, just pause for a moment. Uh, look, um, if you're of a sensitive disposition, look away now, because I'm going to put something on the screen that might frighten you. Um, ah, it's the finances portal, everybody. And um, today is the first. On a, Am I out of my mind on a Monday doing hive hacks for Portuguese pains? This is something, it has to be said, let's not make any sort of secret about this. This is something, well anyone anywhere in the world the, the idea of taxation can be a little bit painful for people can't it but it's um I, I think it's fair to say it's a whole nother level when you're doing it in a foreign language and in a system you're not familiar with um here is the finances portal of portugal where you where you can find out about how much tax you owe and you can look at your nif number um tally uh, and, and all your allowances and that sort of thing and you can raise invoices if you run your own business um, there are some very basic things that we need your help with this morning. If, you, if you've aced this, 
If, if this doesn't frighten you at all, stay tuned and stay of help to the community because together we're going to come up with some hive hacks for a Portuguese pain that is the uh, Finanzas portal. We're going to make friends with Finanzas here a little bit later on. Um, so stay tuned for that. If you have in any way been challenged by your interactions with the portal or Finanzas, let's get our heads together um, after we've said hello to everybody this morning. Okay, uh, Tom, we've said good morning to you, Tom. Uh, go, good mo, everyone. That's very laid back. <laughs> and economical Gemini, who later went on to say I sounded funny. I was just having a little bit of a, a of a joke with you there. Um, a, a voice probably Robin Williams used, but um, I was I've got a new PC, and I thought, what if I say good morning to you all with that button switched on? I don't use that button often enough, do I? It takes me back to my childhood when that it's a simple effect like that on a radio show would cause everyone to laugh. Things are so much more sophisticated now, aren't they? Robert Vinkel, bon dia from an American expat in Provence, France. How is Provence? How about, I mean, if you're a WhatsApp user, Robert, um, you know that we love to share photographs, pics, uh, instas um, from our community here. So if you have uh, something to share along those lines, Please do send in. I mean, where do I do it? Oh, here we go. Uh, Picks and voice messages to the studio on WhatsApp 351-913-590-303 if there's something you would like to send me. Sorry if some of these get missed um, from in these last few days because of the change of computer. Uh, you know how it is on the upside. Yes, it's, everything's going to be faster and better on the downside. Where's that bit of software gone? Oh, no, I forgot my login on that thing and you know, on that platform. And So th there are some lags and delays. Some glitchiness, as my kids call it. Um, Andrea Hogan's here as well. Bon dia uh, from a cold and windy Netherlands this morning. I was at, on a call last night with Donna Jay and our friends uh, Jan and Maria in the Netherlands last night. Always great value on Donna Jay's channel. Um, but I love the, ne the Netherlands. Is that what you call yourself? Uh, so good morning to you, Tom and Andrea. You sound funny. I'm, I'm going to take that as a compliment. Uh, good morning, everyone from Elra. Yeah, and you're quite right, Elra. Uh, an odd thing to see... Um, Gilles de Bac, she could have had the whole of August off, couldn't she, in traditional Portuguese style? But bless her, uh, she's back to, to the work, work face, um, to the visa face. Um, good morning, Gilda from Jim. I have to, I have to pass that on for you, Jim, there, because I know you're, you're working with Gilda. Uh, Anna, bon dia from a rainy Stockholm. Have a great week from Anna. Hey, Anna, great to hear from you, and thank you for that. Uh, we need it, don't we? It's, it, 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 do send out these positive messages and greetings, uh, much needed in a somewhat... Uh, challenging and fearful world sometimes so thank you for being such an awesome community you Anna and all of you here in uh, keeping the spirits up in, in in what can be difficult times at times uh, Stephen Wells a bon dia from Stephen as well head gardener McGrady's here uh, who'll be on later on this evening for the gardening Q&A we'll be here for some of that later on at quarter past six Portuguese time if you're a homesteader or would like to even grow herbs on your balcony or herbs as you uh, American friends call them oregano, basil, that sort of thing. Um, you can learn how to do that. If you're not green thumbed, as I think you say, uh, join us quarter past six uh, at Portuguese time for a little bit of a gardening Q&A where Lee McGrady, professional gardener of this parish, shares his wisdom alongside Anna and John from the Fresh Air team. Great fun every Monday evening. Hola, bom dia, alegria, Gilda and Carl, the Albufeira from Jersey. Hey, Jersey, how's it going down there? Um, wow, you get about... <laughs> It was Coimbra the last time we spoke. Now down in Albufeira. How's the Algarve for you? Uh, bon dia from a rainy Stockholm. Let's have a great week. There's the full version of that message from Anna. Uh, Matthias is here as well. Bon dia, Tourist de Amsterdam. Uh, from Matthias, how are you? Good weekend. Yes, do let me know what you've been having. Uh, what you've been having. What you. What sort of weekend you've had is what I meant to say there. Um, how's it been going? Always an interesting message from Will. I'm sure he's just warming up, having his first sip of coffee and thinking, what can I send in to the... Uh, Good morning, Portugal show this morning. Bon dia, happy Mondays. Cheers, Will. And yeah, a, a stunning uh, Facebook post or two from you at the weekend, especially that one about drinking uh, the uh, uh, the water from boiled banana skins. Yes, true story. Uh, bon dia from Jeff Owen. Good morning to you, Jeff. How are you, mate? Uh, Mark Rigby also from a sunny Pavor de Vagim this morning. Uh, Jacqueline CDM. I saw those pictures of you guys meditating or whatever it was you were doing on the beach near San Martín de San Martín de Porto looks lovely. What a fantastic uh, start to a Sunday morning. Some lovely spiritual fellowship there. Bon dia de Torres de Alfazarão, which is just on the way to San Martín de Porto there. Um, I hope you're well. Uh, tudo bem, Jacqueline at CDM. Hola, bon dia, Torres from Khadija as well. Um, does that strike affect people coming by car? Uh, technically, yes, but the um, the borders are a little bit of a different matter by road than they are by air. 
um, you're not you're not funneled in quite the same and extreme way. And I actually, I don't know from f- firsthand experience, and it's a long time since I've come through a Ceph border. Uh, there was nobody there when we drove through four years ago, um, almost to the day, getting on for the fourth year anniversary, actually, of us being in Portugal. Um, but yes, we drove through thinking, you know, papers, um, get all that stuff ready. Nobody there on the Spanish border coming in uh, at Jerez there um, from Spain into Portugal. Not a soul. And I don't think it was particularly early. We got up from our... No, it wasn't. I think it might have been about midday, something like that. Um, And it wasn't very um, well staffed. It wasn't staffed at all, in fact. Um, But, I mean, that's different. On the busy ones, obviously, there's going to be people there checking very possibly. But, you know, I think people like to be moving and keep moving. And they're just doing the odd check of every other person, you know, that kind of vibe, rather than every single person, because that becomes quite troublesome, doesn't it? On a a roadway, a little bit different, uh, where people are a little bit more controllable at the airport. So I think not. But let's see. Let's put that to the hive mind as well, Matthias, and see, has anyone come in by road? We know that Phil and Kimberly did. Um, and I'm not sure that they had a check. Uh, they may may or may not be here and they may or may not wish to say. But uh, I think we can get some intel from the front line for you there, Matthias. Good question. Uh, three or four hours is a long time after traveling from the States. Absolutely right. It's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's disappointing. And all I've been able to say to everyone is sorry um, on behalf of this situation. So um, it, is, it is awful. Um, and um, I hope Seth get they, what, what they need and want and that they can come to some sort of arrangement because it's not a good look for the country, is it? Let's face it. Uh, Jim White, what is the current turnaround uh, from? Oh, Jim, sorry. I think you might have to email that into the office there with EI. Uh, so the current turnaround time from VFS in Washington, D.C. I think with um, what uh, Gilda said um, in mind uh, about people going on holiday. <clears throat> may not be the case for for American employees, right? Um, it may be other consulates that she's talking about. You know, I, I think um, the holiday thing is less of an issue, I hope. Uh, well, not I hope, but I, 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 culturally speaking, it's less of an issue than it might be in Europe. So that's one for the office, Jim. Sorry I didn't catch that in time. Um, what is it like if you're not vaccinated, says Roxanne? Is that generally... Um, is that to do with borders? I'm not sure. I think you, you you need either a negative test or a vaccination certificate, Roxanne, and that's just a simple paperwork matter. So I don't think there's a big issue with that, if that's what you meant. Um, Hola, bon dia. Good morning, Portugal, from uh, Capricorn 12. I hope you all had a lovely weekend. This is lovely news that visas are coming through. It really is uh, Capricorn 12. It, the, it's growing exponentially, the amount of people who were, were delighted to say hello and welcome to, and the people who are milling about, despite all the uh, aforementioned problems, um, despite uh, all of that, there are people who are filtering through now and having the most wonderful time. And um, who did I see who said, um, it's it surpassed all our expectations. It's a 14 out of 10 from us. It had been it had been a 11 out of 10, but they had uh, some sort of issue with a with a medical issue, and they were so delighted with the response they had, it boosted it to a 14 or a 15 out of 10. Can't be bad, can it? Uh, Thunder Duck, thank you, Gilda. We've been here four months um, now, uh, and that's but it sounds like um, in conjunction with Gilda's help, uh, marvelous. And Thunder Duck, a question from Elra for you. Um, how have you been settling? Very well, they answer. We're still waiting for our driver's licenses, though. Otherwise, all is great. Yes, there's always going to be a little wait for something. And as Gilda says, water in a packed lunch is a good policy. So Elra, um, I think working on behalf of the Portuguese people here, albeit in Finland, good, good. Uh, boa, boa uh, from Elra. And great to hear you of your experience, Thunder Duck. And uh, fingers crossed with those licenses. Maybe, as I said before, we're going to be looking at this bad boy here. The finances portal. Um, how have you got on with that? What do we need to do? What's it all about? Let's bring our hive minds to that. One of many, I think, coming. You know, we, we can talk about all sorts of things that are a little bit painful uh, when it comes to dealing with new things in Portugal, and and this will be one of them today. Uh, other suggestions are welcome, and if you've had a positive experience of using the portal, do let me know. If you if you're a bit of a, you know, people's dispositions are different, aren't they? Those accountant-minded, accountancy-minded people, financially, fiscally-minded people may just eat that for breakfast going into the finances portal. Um, that's not my experience, I have to say. I do have to gird my loins for that. 
Uh, and if I was still drinking, probably have a stiff drink before doing that. But I think together we can we can help our, help each other through it, like a financial support group. Uh, last week, says Matas, had a chat with that on that website, and the person told me that asking for a NIF does not require a face to face support. Oh, okay. Well, this one you you've actually did you reached out and done a look. That's good to know. Um, so that's the probably the Ajuda online button there. That's great, Matthias. You see, we've got some some info coming in already. Uh, no, you you don't need uh, a NIF. You can that can be done uh, remotely. Um, and yeah, Gilda, for example, will get hold of a NIF for you. You don't have to go in and get that for yourself. Um, so that's good. That's useful to know. But we'll come back to that. Uh, bon dia, definitely, <laughs> Mrs. Doubtfire. Is that this? Hello, dear. Oh, no, no, that's, um, yeah, Miss, uh, your, your favourite Robin. <laughs> well, that works quite well, doesn't it? Oh, hello, dear. <laughs> Definitely Mrs. Doubtful. What a movie. What a movie when the kids are dancing to Jump About by House of Pain. That's a great moment, isn't it? Thank you for that, Julie. Um, and if you've just joined, it's because uh, Jim McDonald pictured here um, with Robin Williams. And I've got to find the backstory there. Um, bear with me for a moment while I do that, because we'll come back to that in just a moment. I, I, I'm, uh, Jim's given me per per permission position and permission to do this um so i want i want to share the story properly um because he's very kindly done that and uh, th this man what, what a, tr a tragic and awful situation really with robin williams but so much joy and pleasure and laughs that he brought us to um good to be able to honor him this morning my goodness jim you're a prolific poster we know that and we enjoy that um i found it now that's fantastic so we'll come back to that in just a moment let's say uh, it's nothing funny about the finances portal is there a bit of light relief mrs doubtfire with the finances backdrop there i've logged on to finances one time was totally confused i'm <laughs> that's normal that's perfectly normal no need to take that personally it's almost designed like that although i'm sure the web designers of it would hate me for saying that uh, jackie polly bondi arriving in two weeks why not a roll call every monday on who has arrived in the last I i'm well up for that as well as my touchdown Oh, little emoji emoticon or whatever i'm gonna make something jackie for sure and obviously we need the permission of those people who are delighted to say um they are arriving you know not not everyone not everyone likes a song and dance like you and me jackie but i think um that would be a lovely thing to do wouldn't it um because we you'll have seen names um in the comments here and to to see that progression i think is an absolutely wonderful thing you know like somebody saying hola bon dia from you know like jim white in baltimore one day, Jim, it's going to be Ola Bondia from the Algarve today, Coimbra tomorrow, whatever, um, whichever, or Porto, I think, um, another day. So, yes, what a great idea, Jackie. And uh, we do need some sort of, I think, to, what happens if I press these other buttons? No, there's nothing on them at the moment. Yes, but we need at least a jingle, I think, don't we? Um, good shout, Jackie. Uh, however, it will not work for me as I cannot access the e-portal. Okay, we need someone with a NIF already to do that. You absolutely do. Um, Matthias, that's right. Um, we'll come back to that. M um, Carl Robin Williams Munson. Good morning, Portugal. I, I, I'm not worthy. Not worthy, Mark. New computer, Carl. Good start. Good moment to start. Use Keep Pass app for all passwords and logins. Yeah, I had. I have been using, or in the past, I've used those password software things, but I forgot the password, uh, unfortunately. But um, 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 I really, I don't know. I actually really resent it when I'm locked out of my own stuff. You know, security is not meant to inconvenience you, is it? It's meant to help you and stop the baddies getting your stuff. Um, and then when it when it inconveniences me, I'm really mad about that. And I have got a system which I think is – I'm sure a cryptologist would think my system is pathetic and would be able to find their way through it fairly soon. But you've got to balance, haven't you, your precious time with the amount of time you waste setting up uh, high security systems, right? Uh, so soon I'll need to bring an old person with me to get through immigration quickly. Now, there, there's a, a bright mind on the case yeah get some kids or some old people if seth do that and they'll whiz you you know or just grab someone in the line say um you know call me avo would you like me to help you to the front of the queue on you go there you go no good turn goes unpunished <laughs> i suspect uh david dawson born D hey david how are you and uh but a bange i will say celebrating your birthday over the weekend i hope you had a great time david dawson I still don't understand what you were talking about that was your birthday treat. Was that literally or was that some other coded reference that was being talked about in the Man Cave thread? Careful, careful, careful from Elra when getting info from finances. Before leaving them, I asked, or before leaving, I asked them if there was anything I needed to do related to taxes. Uh, they said no. Turns out I needed to change my official address. And cliffhanger. Hate it when that happens. What happened? What happened, Elra? 
Um, were you fined for that? That's the other thing you need to know, isn't it? Come back to that as well. Uh, bon dia, alegria a todos from Gary Austin Garvo. Uh, Garvo, um, did you see my post about tree huggers? Absolutely poignant and beautiful. The origins of the word or the phrase tree hugger. Uh, El Relinda, and specify if I wanted to be double taxed or not. Mm, let me see. Um, good morning from Scotland. Hey, Patricia, how are you this morning? What camera are you using now? Oh, I see. It's not the camera as in Kaldash, the municipal, municipal camera. Uh, I, I fished out. Does it look different, Gary? Um, I'm not liking it so much. I, I think I'll have to take better care of myself now I've got a higher definition camera. Um, but I've got an old Logitech. It's, it's quite an old one. It's it, Mrs. M. <clears throat> when we got when we met and got married, um, I was going to make a sexist comment. I, I, she was remarkably well specified, you know, um, when we met. She had in, some incredible tech, <clears throat> and she was using a BlackBerry. Uh, she was using it on Tesco Mobile, which I thought was a bit naff. But I was really impressed, actually, for the lady to have such incredible technology. And I'm still using one of her um, webcams here. That is a has a Carl Zeiss lens on it. I don't want super definition. I don't want me scaring people early in the morning. I can see it already. My Good Morning Portugal graphics are pixelated and blurred with this new high, higher definition thing. And I I think I can change the definition in the platform. But yeah, Logitech, um, a Logitech. I think nine thousand. I think it is because I downloaded the software for it. And uh, the beautiful thing about it is it, has, it says it has a Carl Zeiss lens on it. Good enough for now. And the, and the um, green screen seems to be performing fairly well as, as well. And I got myself a bargain. I, I try to take the, the counsel of the man cave uh, nerds, you know, say, <clears throat> you know, what the problem is when you, excuse me, uh, when you ask um, people who know things about computers and you say, I'm thinking of, you know, getting this, what do you think? I said, Pah, that's pathetic. Eight gigabytes and no water cooled servo assisted turbo on it. That's rubbish. And you're thinking, well, I only need it just to run a couple of things from the cloud. Um, so I think I've done OK. Um, and I think I've got a bit of a bargain. Um, so, um, yeah, Zeiss camera and an HP little tower that goes rather than using my laptop anymore. Sorry to bore you with all that tech stuff. Um, good morning. I'm in South Africa and I can't wait to emigrate to Portugal. So there's somebody um, who we can welcome in at some point. That will be Kaili, Kailile Malongo. I hope I've done your name justice there, Kaelile. And bon dia, Carl, from William Ruffin. Ruffing. Uh, Bill from Florida. Bill, I'll call you Bill. Thank you for that permission there. Bill from Florida, but now in Porto for two months. Met Lonnie last week here. Oh, fantastic. Um, you see, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, not only are people coming over, they're meeting up with each other as well. That's fantastic. Good morning to you, Bill, uh, from Florida. How's it going? Had a nice weekend. Got a bit of sunburn as I was trying to prepare for Portugal. Were you, were you toning yourself up there? And are you of a rather pale complexion, Matthias, possibly? And do I see your little, um, little like me, uh, light on the on on hair on the bonce there? Um, so you gotta be careful with that. Get yourself a nice a floppy straw hat for when you come to Portugal. But you sound like you're you're conditioning your skin for Portugal. Also tried to work out issues, or also tried to work out um, issues with video editing uh, SW and my 4K action cam. My goodness, um, that, see, it all does get very technical when you speak to these people who know what they're talking about um, or sound like they know. You never know, dear. They sound like they know what they're talking about. Um, if you come down through Galicia to Villanova de Saveira, there isn't even a spot where anyone could pull you over for a check, lol. Just pop over the bridge. There you go. Thank you for that. Thank you for that, Khadija. Uh, only good guys listen to that information. There, um, That's for you, Matthias, I think. As I was in the mood, I just graded, upgraded from community member to premium. That is a very good and worthwhile reminder. Thank you so much. And we've got that somewhere, haven't we? Let me see. Where is my little ticker tape? There you go. Show Support the show. Become a premium member at expatsportugal.com forward slash upgrade. Matthias, thank you very much for that reminder. And that really does help. Um, we are, we are we, we, we're increasing the amount of ways you can support us um, at Expats Portugal. Um, no support is required, I hasten to add. You know, you can join free as Matthias. That was the entry level. But hopefully that's the gateway drug to um, absolute addiction to Expats Portugal. From there on, you then feel moved to buy premium or you join the Expats plan. And we're going to have a new, after our beta testing 
which is going pretty well, um, you know, I say, uh, not just me saying that, but getting a feedback from a few of the folks who are on that course, uh, seems to be going pretty well, and we will launch it in earnest, I think, in October, for anybody who really wants to get some full-on hand-holding support for coming to Portugal. Um, we have a lot, working with a lot of Americans on that, and I suspect that's that, that, that's especially useful for people coming from North America, but open to anyone who wants a little bit of hand-holding, a little bit of coaching, part coach, part cheerleader, kick up the butt sometimes somebody said they enjoyed uh, from me who'd have thought it uh, on their journey over so we, we are extending um, our offer I think as, as as people call it let me see if I can share something with you as well we've got the new um, uh, member level uh, nobody's done this yet and you might want to do it this morning I'm, I'm going to share the link for you on the screen I've got a new membership level um, for uh, the YouTube channel okay and I see a lot of you know, the, a lot of people put me to shame with how these things work. I don't honestly know what I'm doing a lot of the time with YouTube. I make the videos and I stick them up on there and I hope people like them. And then I see, wow, people are commenting and people are watching. And, woo, um, you know, we, like, for example, we're 480. I'm looking at the back office now and I'm pleased to report uh, we have over 7,800 subscribers. Thank you to from the bottom of my heart and the heart of my bottom, thank you to all of you who've subscribed to that. And 489 of you in the last 28 days. Um, you know, talking of green thumbs and green fingered, if, 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 the, if the YouTube channel were a garden, I'm quite neglectful, um, it has to be said. Uh, but something I have just added, uh, more by luck than judgment, is the new membership uh, that you can, you can take advantage of. And uh, I'm going to put that in the comments now. If you do want to, I wonder if I can make that, I can share that on the screen for you. Let me see. You're going to need a little bit of music, I think, when this gets played. That's a little, little bit of guitar stuff. Let's see if this works. No, it doesn't. <laughs> That's okay. Um, but th thank you, Matthias, for that. Um, let me just share this very quickly before we move on to finances. It's 38 past the hour already. What are we like? Always do this, don't we? But we're going to come back to the, the hive mind for Portuguese pains. But I just want to sh share this uh, with you very quickly indeed. And uh, so that you can see what I'm talking about. There we go. Um, let me bring it onto the screen. Join this channel. Get access to premium um, membership perks. And you're called, for 9.99 euros a month, you are the GMP gigglers and go-getters. Um, I, I think this probably is more appealing to people under the age of 15 to have a nice little badge. <laughs> But you get the the longer you're the longer you're a member, it goes from green to red. I think so. When you've been a member for 25 years, you get one. Of, isn't that amazing that after 25 years of membership, your badge will turn from green to red? Um, and and I did this out of criticism. Um, somebody said, you know, blah blah. You're always going on stroking your ego, etc. We just want to know what the the content is, and it's typical this morning. We're doing exactly the same thing. 40 minutes past the hour. I haven't really talked about finances yet. If you wanted to go straight to the finances bit. This is what would help. If you join this, I'm going to chop those segments into easy, brief chunks so you can just, oh, there's the finances thing. There's the thing about fire that he talked about. Let's go to it instead of all the community chat. I love the community chat. I know others do, but some people don't, and they just want to go straight to the content. So this is what will happen if you join at 9.99 euros you know i need a little bit of an incentive to make it happen um the segments will be in the members only area so you will you will see those edited highlights and you will get priority when you're asking comments uh in in the chat here in the com in the comment section i'll see your loyalty badge and that can prioritize you don't worry everybody else all you regulars who've been with me for months and years now you will not be forgotten in this. This is just to help new people, especially, you know, when they want to ask a question on a Wednesday, ask anything about Portugal. It will help so I can discern who is a member asking a question and, and whether it's Matthias talking to Stephen or something like that. And I can ignore that bit. Um, and also, yeah, so that's what I said. I call it the sting. I'll be watching you, Perk. I'll be watching out for every breath you take, every move you make. I'll be watching out for your comments every morning and prioritize, prioritizing those questions and comments as appropriate. Uh, all for the princely sum of a niner 99 there. Oh, did you see a, a sneak peek of my back office there? Oh, um, how exciting. I wonder if, uh, if I gave any <laughs> anything away there. I'm going to press the stop button now. And I've also lost um, content. Oh, no, here we are. I'm back on, the, back on the right screen now. Okay, that was quite a diversion, wasn't it? All because Matthias said he'd upgraded from member to premium. Thank you very much. Um, to Bill from Andrea, what part of Florida? From Florida, raised in St. Cloud but moved to Europe from Cocoa Beach, Merritt Island area. There you go. Khadija. Uh, Recef Airports. My son went back to the USA last week and was in the Connecting Flights Customs Line in D.C. Airport for over an hour. Oh, no. 
Um, stop complaining, US folks. <laughs> All right. Uh, there you go. Um, that's you told. Um, Andrea, I live in St. Pete. This is interesting, isn't it? St. Cloud, St. Pete. I've not heard of those parts of Florida, but I probably wouldn't as a tourist, would I? Where did I go? A lovely little... Um, we, I went to, to Disney, as you might expect in Florida, but fa found this Casadega or somewhere, this lovely little village that was full of psychics. Like Everyone lived there was a psychic and did psychic readings, you know, it said on the door. Um, in this um, little village, little town in um, in Florida. It was an amazing hot trip. Um, Andrea Hogan, this, that is awesome. Go Gators! Um, and go Gators! We don't really know what they're talking about, but we're just going to say it anyway. Go Gators! Uh, you'll probably be checked wherever you enter the EU borders, usually France or Spain, if you're coming through from the UK. Oh, okay, yes, on your first border. That's why you don't normally get checked at the Portuguese border with Spain. It's Schengen! Go Schengen! Um, as far, thank you, Gary, for that. As far as I found out, you have to have a NIF to log into the finances website. As soon as we've done the comments, we're going to go do that. Alex Fullerton, born dear Carl. My wife and I finally arrived at our house. Here's another one. Touchdown. All your stagua. And it is so good to be back and away from rainy Glasgow. Um, say the Fullertons there. Welcome back, you lot. Uh, fantastic. Uh, Matthias, yes, Ajuda Online help and the chat gets translated into English automatically. Uh, that's great to know. I haven't used that. Me, my dog, and bike. Yes, Finances will give you a password for the first time login. And we need to talk about that. I'm going to come back to that in just a moment. Accessing the portal from Scotland is not good. If you're using a VPN, you have to switch it off for the links don't work, says Patricia. VPN is for security and keeping you safe online and to watch moody websites, right? Um, and to have it, having to switch it off is not good. Yeah, I can understand why they would want you to, but I also understand your point of view there, Patricia. Yeah, how annoying. Um, John Rooney, another one on the way um, for a touchdown. Nine more sleeps. Woohoo! <laughs> so we could do countdowns as well. Tune in tomorrow, John, with eight more sleeps. Hello, the Rooneys. How are you this morning? Uh, leaving for Portugal today. What's her face? <laughs> That's brilliant. What's her face? North Carolina, I'm guessing. Um, yes, from North Carolina. Can't wait to see your beautiful country. Um, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. What's the face? Um, I hope you don't mind me calling you that. Uh, but it is your YouTube channel after all. What's the face, North Carolina? Congratulations there. Um, this is people congratulating you who aren't even here yet. Um, going with the royal we here. Uh, royal we is a is a is, a, is a, an expression from the UK. Nothing to worry about. Um, as in, you know. The Queen saying, we, uh, we and my Her Majesty's government, um, you know, just a, hand, a delegation. Uh, all you need to know about delegation is in the royal we, uh, but, which still doesn't sound right. Bon dia from a grizzly grey Galway. Galway, isn't it beautiful? Um, from Anna Carroll there. Um, that's quite interesting, isn't it? Um, yes, um, two Annas in this morning already. So, and uh, from Galway alone, love Galway. Absolutely had a wonderful time there. My first ill-fated emigration was to Ireland. Only lasted, I think, 10 days. But we gave it a go. <laughs> it was a plucky effort. Um, what's the face? Bovia Gem from Thunder Duck. Nice one. Um, I did see the tree post inspiring women. And I hope it inspired you in some way, Gary, there. We've got work to carry on, haven't we? Thank you, Cole. Yes, first birthday in Setúbal, Portugal. Arrived four weeks ago, um, David. We feel like we threaded the needle getting here. Um, with the airport strike and Ceph issues going on quite a journey. Well, well done. Uh, that's fantastic. Brilliant news. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, Thunder Duck. Carl, do you have any GMP coffee mugs on hand? They are shipped from Etsy. Uh, that's the only one I have on hand. And oh, no, you can't have it. It's mine. Um, so, yeah, go to Etsy for, for some of that. And um, maybe somebody will be kind enough to pop that in the comments for us. There, I'll do that if I can uh, for you, Thunder Duck. Yeah, no, when we meet, I, sadly, I can't bring one. I've only got this one, uh, which was a sample one, and I'm holding on to it. Um, although you do put me in an awkward position, I do feel like I should give it to you as well. But um, then I can't hold it up in the mornings um, for people. Unless I get my Sharpie pens out and just get a white mug and make, make my own version of that, which we do not approve of. Do not do that at home. Buy the Etsy one. Uh, Matthias, Garvo, Carl has sent me your cell phone number so we can get in touch for um, September. <laughs> I'm, I'm a PA for everybody as well. Look, a lot, lot of uh, people don't like the HD or 4 cams, 4K cams because they're not very forgiving. But yours seems fine. I don't think it's 4K, um, but it's good enough, isn't it? Um, David Durham, hola, bon dia. 
Hey, birthday greetings to you, David. Uh, bon dia from London. Uh, I also upgraded premium membership. Desperately tried to join in the motoring webinar last Thursday, but couldn't get in. Is the replay up now? Thank you, Iris, um, for prompting me on the fact that I haven't done that yet. <laughs> so you're my PA as well as me being your PA. Um, yes, mix and match there. Yeah, I'll do that today. Um, as we just bought a left-hand drive car in preparation, I know we should have listened to that first, so can't wait to catch it. It's really good. It's really good, even if I say so myself. Um, we, uh, Jerry put in a great presentation, um, which he was going to put up on the forum. I don't know if that's up there yet. Um, he may be listening in and uh, might be prompted like me to get a move on with that. But it was a great webinar, all sorts of aspects. We spoke to Zest, um, our car hire partners, um, we had, had a wonderful presentation from Jerry and the extraordinary Umberto talked about classic cars as well. So I'll, I'll do my best to get that up in the next 24, 48 hours for you there. It is um, our Portugal calling webinar from last Thursday. Uh, still in Portugal, says Dougie. Hello, Doug. Um, had difficulty with pesky tests, which have held up my departure. Well, I thought the old um, Clap Clinic was processing things a little bit faster these days, Doug, but um, fingers crossed for you there, mate. Um, what's the best place for graffiti and murals in Lisbon? Asked David Durham. Everywhere, uh, basically. You only have to walk a block to see something or other. Uh, best place, I don't know. The outstanding stuff. If you walk along the Avenida do Republica, you will see some, some corkers. Uh, did they know you were coming to visit? Who's that from? Um, there. Um, my woohoo moment will be when I get home going the other way. Doug is a seasoned visitor to Portugal, a little bit blase and, and, um, Oh, a jaundiced there. Uh, I'll be glad when I go home, says D Dougie. Uh, idea for couples. I have a Portuguese SIM card and a VPN uh, on my computer. So it thinks I'm in the US and hubby uses our home internet for Portugal access and has a US SIM card in his phone. Easier for us. Well, there's a combo to consider. Um, will you make GMP teacups? Asked Michelle. Very refined from the uh, <laughs> from the colonies this morning. <laughs> Dare I say that, Michelle? Um, what do you mean? So you can sip the because the tea, of course, was taken from Portugal to England, wasn't it? Um, by one of the great queens, was it Catherine um, de Braganza? And so she was offered gin, as you would be on arrival in the UK, obviously. Um, and um, she said, no, I'll take a tea, please. Um, chav, chav, verde, probably. Um, and, and thus began the whole English tea drinking thing. So I think you're right. We should probably have a whole canteen of cutlery and a set of um, crockery uh, made in fine bone china uh, with the gin. Won't that look nice? Won't that be an interesting combination? The Barcelo cockerel on some bone china. Um, it's a good shout. I will put it in a memo to Astrid. Thank you, Michelle, for that. Um, see you tomorrow morning. Oh, um, I think the strikes are holding me in Portugal also, not helping make the most of it. Yes, Jerry. Oops. <laughs> you too, eh, Jerry? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, David Durham, there are a few graffitis near Amoreiras area, uh, Avenida Conselheiro, Fernando de Souza, Souza, but they are pretty much scattered around the city. Yeah. And I'm sure there is, you can download a walk probably that will take you past some of the finest examples. 10 minutes to go. We still haven't done finances. Woohoo. The mug looks so cool. Definitely want one of those. It's mine. My beauty. Um, Shelby checking Etsy. Oh, we got Robin Williams to talk about as well. And we'll come back to that. It's a lovely place to finish. Okay. So. And uh, let's get the finances portal back online. It's a new feature for a Monday. Hive hacks for Portuguese pains. This is me addressing the fact that I'm too much of a Pollyanna uh, when it comes to Portuguese things and don't like to talk about things that are difficult uh, or make far too much light of them when I do. Let's see. Uh, what's that? <laughs> Um, was checking the forums, uh, no car presentation yet. Pressure's on, Jerry, isn't it? Flipping heck. Okay, so here we are. Um, this is what I want to share with you. This is what we need help with collectively. This can be quite a difficult thing. And there's one notable pain that I do want to talk to you about. But let's let's um, let's just have a quick tour around, shall we? First thing to note, um, when you go to portaldasfinances.gov.pt, that's the, um, let me put that in the comments, first of all. So you've definitely got the right place to go to. Um, as and when you need it. I can't imagine that anyone will be able to avoid this for the whole of their Portuguese life here. So here it is. Um, and let's let's set a great example and uh, go on to it happily. Um, and uh, with gay aplomb, as we as we sort out our taxation and fiscal affairs. OK, so portaldasfinances.gov.pt. 
Um, morning to you, Nigel, who slept in again, lol. Just in time for a stunning taxation presentation. Um, Patricia, I'll have to come back to that. That might be a Wednesday thing. Uh, why does it take so long to rent an apartment in Portugal? I keep emailing the contact person, but it takes some days to reply. I need this for our D7. You should be able to rent from Airbnb as they are quick to reply and book. OK, we'll have to come back to that. And DJ Bondia told us any fires in Portugal this season or is everything OK this year? There are some, but that's not what we're talking about right now. I'm gonna, you're going to get me in trouble again, like drifting off. Um, so let's come back to finance, shall we? And uh, continue our little tour around the site here. So yes, uh, there's your um, there's your uh, website address. Um, the uh, for 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 the uh, for what we're looking at here, the AT Autoridad Tributaria e Aduaneira. I'd never read that out before, and I wish I'd practiced that before. But first thing you'll know if you click on uh, do do a is, was that a right click? I did yes, a right click. Translate to English. Now, this isn't ideal, but it's better than trying to read por fiscal Portuguese. I think you'll agree. And uh, you'll see here. So you can do your IRS type affairs, um, your, your tax returns and so on. Consult and resolve here. The, this, is, this is some of the great translation that you'll be treated to. Consult and resolve here the irregular situations detected in the IRS de declaration. That's just not for me personally, by the way. That's for everybody. Um, avoid Avoiding going to the finances services so that you can do it online is what they're suggesting there in the first of those three significant boxes on the screen. And incidentally, yes, this is for individuals, this is for businesses and other entities. Entity is a word you'll need to get used to uh, in Portugal, but um, a thing we you might say in a different language. But entities is a word you'll hear a lot here. Uh, payments and payment flexibility. Isn't it nice to know that you can fulfill your obligations to pay v VAT, EVA, and withholding tax on IRS and IR IRC in installments so you can request flexibility. And I suppose in the post-pandemic time, when money's getting a bit tight and irregular, some people are needing to do that. So you can do that here as well. And you can go to the e-counter service, which is taxpayer support. Um, and you can do that. Um, and you can also, as Matthias pointed out earlier on, you can click on the online help button here. And should we do it now live and see? Um, we can just say, hola, bom dia. And let's see if we get how quickly we get a reply. Um, I feel a bit naughty doing this because I've not, not actually got an inquiry and I'm taking up busy time of a Portuguese um, uh, civil servant here. But let's just see um, if, if how quickly one gets responded to. Um, and there's some sort of warning there in Portuguese. That bit isn't translated, but I can do that very quickly in the same way. I think if I click on that. No, I can't on that particular pop up. But let's see how long that takes. That's going to be interesting, isn't it? Um, yeah, we'll come back to that. Um, so you can access your tax services, you can access custom services, and you can go to the latest publications. Some people probably actually do that. They probably go to the finances portal not to miss a, a beat and be fully abreast of the latest fiscal and accountancy things. Um, here. I mean, it, it, you know, different strokes for different folks, right? Um, some people will do that. Your accountant can help you through this. But the big thing that I want to know about is here. Um, so begin a session. Um, that's that's the way you go in. Um, you put you, you can do it in a number of ways by the look of it there. I don't know what gov.pt uh, sign in is. I don't know what EORI is, but suffice to say you can do them. When I go into this, I usually use my NIF number and I use a password to go in. Now, that sounds fairly straightforward, doesn't it? But there are people in this country who have been going around in circles in that first bit. And it's the registration part here. So. It looks like you can do this. You can register and have the password sent to your tax address. That's worth knowing, isn't it? That it's sent to your tax address. So it'll have to be, if you if they haven't got your tax address, they can't send it to you. So you need a tax address for the, and this begins the vicious cycle of being stuck in some sort of Brazil type loop, you know, the movie Brazil, um, and in some sort of bureaucratic nightmare. And I know there are people stuck outside this. So this is what, this is where we need some of the hive mind help with this. Okay. So after registration, the password will be sent to your tax address. Um, if you indicate an email and a Portuguese mobile phone, you can cancel and recover your password and also receive informational alerts. So there you go. It looks like you can put your tax address here. Um, I, I don't know if they will send that to any old random address or it needs to be something that they've already got on file. Uh, somebody else might be able to help me with that in this instance. But um, uh, you put in your NIF number. You have to have the NIF. So there you go. You go into another loop there, don't you? So I suspect when you've got your 
a NIF number there, um, which they're calling a VAT number. This is where it gets confusing, right? Because it's not really a VAT number, is it? It's more your fiscal number. Um, and it will be nine digits. And um, you pop it in there, which you'll have to have already before you can use this service, which you could have got via Gildor or a migration company of some sort. Or you could have got into a Portuguese finance office to do that, okay? Because you don't have to be a Portuguese citizen to get a NIF number. They'll take tax from anybody. Your email address then goes in. Your telephone number goes in for those alerts. Um, and in, typically, um, let's see what what sort of um, secret questions. They, your favorite book, movie, color, your favorite piece. What, no, what your favorite piece? Is that a gun? Um, your favorite song, your favorite TV series, series or your favorite vacation destination that's going to be an easy one for some of the people here um and that isn't that great the the, the the example question is the immortals um i think that's wishful thinking from finances that isn't it that they can tax you forever um anyway so, and, and it looks fairly straightforward problem here being that i know some people have been locked outside this uh, vicious cycle of needing a password to get in and the password runs out okay you have to use it within a certain time frame Otherwise, it, um, it it disappears, it dissolves, uh, like some sort of mission impossible thing. I don't understand the security aspects of that, but it does cause pain to people, okay? Um, so, Gareth Payne, thank you for this. Here we go, the hive mind in action, everybody, right? Uh, that page will check if the provided address is the same as on file with the NIF. Uh, was there, try my Dutch tax number and my current address did not work. So, there you go. And, yeah, Gareth saying, no, they only send it to the address you've registered with them. So when you get your NIF and when you register, it, the tax address there to send the little slip to that has your password on it will need to be the same address that they have on record. Look at this. The hive mind is busy this morning. You only get five goes and then you get locked out. Bear that in mind as well. Terrifying. Um, another question. Anyone know if the SEF identity cards are moving yet? Uh, that's the biometric business, isn't it? Um, use a realtor, says Khadija, uh, direct mail me for a contact. Use a real. Oh, that's not for this. Okay. <laughs> Let me just make that really clear. Khadija is not saying use a, a real estate agent to help you into the portal. That's for getting a rental. Okay. The hive mind is really busy. And we have a number of tabs open metaphorically here. Um, I ordered, it is another tab that's open. I ordered a couple of coffee mugs from Etsy. I used Apple Pay, but it never asked for an address. I got the receipt and they're shipping it to, no, I sent a message to Ashley. Let's see what we can do to make sure they come to Portugal and not to Texas. Yikes. Uh, but again, that's, you can't order a Good Morning Portugal mug through the finances portal. We're working on it, but at the moment you can't do that. Um, if the merchant, only kidding, you're never probably never going to be able to get a Good Morning Portugal mug through the finances portal. Who knows though? Um, if the merchant hasn't reported the fatura uh, we will need to add them manually so we can get the money back when filling our taxes that's a very special one there isn't it um but yes everyone and everything gets tied up via their NIF number on here you will when you send an invoice to somebody you will need their NIF number and it's all corroborated back and forth and when you for example when you give you let me just have a sip of tea hold on just a moment from my good morning portugal my Right, I'm back. That was a lovely sip of cold tea. Okay, um, with your NIF number, you can find out here. Let me rewind a bit. When you buy something in Portugal, as, as people get asked for the first time, let, let us prepare you for that magical moment in Lidl when they say, um, contribuente. Do you want to give your contribution number? Uh, the, the, uh, that is the NIF number. And this is what some people will be doing in the queue ahead of you. And you think, why is, why is that person giving their phone number um, to the, to, to the uh, checkout person? It's to corroborate, to match up your spending um, with government records, okay? And, and it goes towards your allowances for shopping, for example, for your motor, um, for your mechanics bill, for your veterinary bills. There's a certain allowance against your tax bill every year, and that's managed by giving your NIF number when you make those purchases, and that's all tallied up behind the scenes by the rather marvellous finance uh, computing system. And, of course, as... Um, was pointed out recently on one of our webinars. If, for example, you're making lots of claims with your NIF number, but you're not reporting the amount of money you're earning, that will be very obvious on the taxation system, won't it? So if every time you go into Lidl and every time you spend 50 euros in there, you keep saying, yes, put that on the portal for me, I'll give you my NIF number. And by the end of the year, what you've spent, um, let's say, uh, £6,000 in Lidl, because you keep buying those trainers, 
in there and tools every time you go on a, on an impulse buy. But you've only declared five thousand euros on the spending side. Uh, sorry, on the earning side, um, that would be a red flag, wouldn't it, in the system? Okay, the fiscal address. Thank you, Hive Mind, for all of this. Namely, here, Mark, the fiscal address is the address you give when getting your NIF. Even if the address is outside Portugal, you need to change the address when you've moved to Portugal and have rental, contract, property, purchase, and deed residency. So keep them up to date. They will probably fine you. Certainly look poorly on you not having the right address in there. I need to have another sip of tea and a cough. I wonder if coughing and drinking tea in 4K is better. You tell me. Uh, problem now is us Brits appear not to be able to change this address until Seth sort out our Brexit residence card. Now, there we. this is where we go into the loops, isn't it? And if you find yourself in a loop and all you want to do is to go online um, and, and, and order your portal password, you could find yourself uh, uh, being derailed, couldn't you, out of the process. Um, if you... If you miss your opportunity, uh, your time limit, you could find yourself locked out. And this seems a shame because all, all what people seem to want to do here is keep up to date and pay their taxes and avoid fines. And it can become quite difficult, folks. That's why I mentioned it this morning. Motoring, just, just in motoring presentation just posted. Um, so <laughs> thank you for that prompt, um, uh, Matthias. Thunderduck, you should have probably changed your address in Apple Pay before ordering. There's a number of running issues here. That's not anything to do with finances. Uh, my accountant, okay, just emailed me the paper. They sent her with my info so I can change it. It has these numbers, referencia senia de acceso internet and código de acceso telefonico. That's great. And that's another little tip there coming in, isn't it? A laterally thought out tip. Get your accountant to help you with this as well. That can be, I mean, those people who know how to use this, namely accountants, are worth their weight in gold and they can help you. Um, but, you know, there is a... Um, uh, there's an issue here that, you know, it is your property, your portal and your responsibility. That's worth bearing in mind. And there's only so much the accountant will be prepared to do for you. Um, thanks to Jerry from Matthias there for you posting up that uh, presentation. Thanks, Jerry. It was a great presentation about motoring, by the way, everybody. That's what we're talking about there. If you have a non-commercial NIF, uh, you cannot shop at some commercial outlets. Okay, that's good to know as well. Thank you for that, Nigel. Sort of the macros of the world, I suppose. Uh, interesting to know. Um, so there are different types of NIFs, the, the um, business one and the personal one. I thought an Aria Propria real estate was a realtor. Am I wrong? Asking Patricia and the hive mind response to that so far is no idea. Uh, Thunderduck, uh, that's what happened. I was, so we, yes, continuing to deal with a number of issues for you all here. Um, that's uh, Thunderduck and Matthias trying to figure out how to get some Good Morning Portugal works to not to Texas, um, but to Portugal. So that's where we are at the moment. Um, we also have um, Matthias talking to Nigel. I guess that would be the NIF. Uh, that you can only use to get the bank account right. Um, I don't know if that's a, a, a humorous comment, talking about another one of these loops that people get into. But yes, to get a bank account, you will need a NIF number. You will need a NIF number for every possible fit, fiscal financial encounter uh, that you have here in Portugal. So let's see if anyone's come back to us. So you can order your, let, let's just to recap there, uh, hive mind hacks. Uh, for Portuguese pains, it seemed only right to start with Finance Us. Uh, you can order a password from there, but you are going to need your NIF number and you are going to have to make sure that the, the address they have um, is the one that you want it sent to. So if you're already in Portugal and they've got you on file as, as in America or in UK, that's not going to be much use to you, is it? Unless, of course, you get it sent there and you trust the person who might open it for you. I'm not suggesting you definitely do that, but that will be one option if you're absolutely desperate, right? Um, so let's go back. Let's see if anybody has said hello to us from the um, Ajuda there. Have we had a had, have we had a response or have I just lost it by changing pages? I think I might have lost it. <laughs> um, not in every sense of the phrase. Uh, you'll be glad to know. So, OK, we didn't get online help, but we know that Matthias did and that they will speak to you and it will be translated into English or you might even get an English speaker. Uh, behind the scenes there so there we will return to this that's our first go um that's bringing you up to speed i think main thing to say really is that this is unavoidable you will have to make friends with finances at some point if you're coming to portugal and um here's here's where that journey begins okay um and let me just give you that link again so that you do know where to go portal finances.gov.pt to get there for all matters including taxation um, checking on your your allowances with the NIF number, 
getting your password and even looking for for um, flexibility in payments uh, in installments there. So I hope that's been in some way useful and not struck too much terror into your hearts this morning. We're going to go and finish uh, finish off today's uh, show. Thank you for everyone who's been here this morning with a little bit of lightheartedness from uh, Robin Williams and the time our very own Jim McDonald. Uh, loops, good description. Portugal is looping. It can happen. Um, even taxing your car is what you can do there as well. Thank you, Nigel, for that. Um, and um, yeah, uh, that was mentioned. That's that's another loop. That's our own little expats Portugal loop here. Uh, every aspect of motoring is dealt with by Jerry, pretty much all the important ones anyway, in his presentation, which is now up in the forum, um, including taxation and insurance and buying a car, a guide to buying the car. Jerry scotches, although he's an Irishman, he scotches the rumour. Uh, am I allowed to say that? Um, he scotches the rumour that buying cars in Portugal is more expensive, for example, than in the UK. Um, he's done the due diligence there, and the, the findings are interesting. You'll find those on the presentation that he's just uploaded to the forum, expatsportugal.com forward slash community. Or if you can wait a few hours longer, uh, the presentation, as he, as he delivered it live, the recording of that will be up on our YouTube channel real soon. Has anyone become a member yet? Uh, no. Um, banks can give you a temporary uh, nib number. Now, now that's a curveball. Is that a NIF or a NIB? Is that a NIB number for banking uh, rather than a NIF? There, I'm sure they can't give you a NIF number temporarily. Um, even with a NIF and subsequently moving to Portugal, you have 153 days to register for submitting tax returns. Given that the Portuguese tax, this is useful. Thank you, Mark. Given that the Portuguese tax year is January to December, then if arriving late in the year, then it makes sense to wait until after the 1st of January to register submitting tax returns. Otherwise, you'll probably have to admit Submit a return for the whole of the year of arrival. For example, arrive November 2020, then wait until after the 1st of January 21. Otherwise, you'd have to submit a 2020 return. Nice one, Mark. I like the way your mind works, and I love your um, your, your 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 giving nature in terms of what, helping people out here and not wanting to them make mistakes maybe that you made or that or you've seen other people make. Thanks so much, Mark, um, for your contributions. OK, let's let's take a look at uh, Robin Williams now as we finish the show at 10 minutes past seven this morning. Not uh, 10 minutes past seven, seven minutes past 10. Don't panic anybody. It is eight minutes now past 10, not 10 minutes past eight. I mean, a lot of you expats don't even know what time it is anymore, do you? Let alone what day it is. So uh, th don't worry. Just forget I even mentioned the time or the day. It's Monday, by the way, for those of you who have completely lost track. Um, where's Robin Williams? Here he is, the pick of, of, of our very own Jim McDonald, who you'll see contributing from Wiesbaden, Germany. Another one uh, for whom we can say touchdown as he arrives in Portugal um, soon. And the, the backstory here, um, I saw Robin Williams do a USO show in 2003 in the Middle East, just a few days after Saddam Hussein was captured, says Jim. He was a comedic genius. After the show, he and all of the entertainers stayed behind until every single person who wanted got a chance to say hi and get their picture taken, as you can see here, Jim doing that with a massive smile on his face. I saw uh, many USO shows in my life from Vietnam to Iraq. He was genuine with everyone and he took his cue from the person he was with at the time. Some were quiet and shy and he was quiet and reserved with them. Others engaged in funny conversation with him. Gee, can you guess which group I was in? I'm guessing probably the latter there. Lol, I stood back and made sure that all of the young military personnel who wanted to had a chance to meet him before I approached him. This was at least 45 minutes after the show ended, and he was still as energetic as when he was on stage. When the pick was taken, he had his hand on his head saying before and then on mine and said after. The people still there all cracked up. Uh, he will be missed, <laughs> and I'm so glad I had a chance to meet him. Yes, indeed, RIP Robin and Nanu Nanu. What an amazing moment to end on there. Yes, uh, greatly missed Robin Williams there. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. Uh, the Good Morning Vietnam man, legend, Madam Doubtfire, Robin Williams. Yes, Nanu Nanu Shazbot um, from here on Good Morning Portugal. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for joining us. And uh, we will look forward to seeing you on the gardening Q&A tonight or we will see you in the morning. Um, so it's 4 a.m. for David Durham. <laughs> yes, of course it is. Um, I'm just giving a Portuguese time check. I'm letting you as well as in giving us, you know, showing you the pictures so you can you can enjoy the weather. You can enjoy the time here 
you're currently enjoying 10 past 10 in Portugal, um, David Durham, 4 a.m. And yes, a nib number. So you get a temporary nib number so that you can have some um, financial interactions. We opened a Portugal bank account and they gave us a nib number. I think that's so that you can still continue to function in some way fiscally here in Portugal. So have a great day. Bon dia to you. Uh, ciao, ciao, abraços, beginos. Have a great day. Thank you all for your amazing contributions um, to the hive-minded Good Morning Portugal show here on Expats Portugal. We'll see you real soon. Take care and bye for now. <laughs>